Back in the uh, section on improper integrals, we learned about a type of integral called a p-integral. There's a, a very close analogy to, uh, to series. It's defined almost the same way. What we can see is uh, right here that uh, this, uh, if we have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p, we call that type of series a p-series. Recall that the, uh, the p-integral was the integral from 1 to infinity of dx over x to the p. So this is really a very similar definition, and we're going to find that the rule is, is really the same. So uh, first of all, uh, the, let's imagine that p is less than or equal to 0. If p is less than or equal to 0, then uh, we, we can demonstrate algebraically, I'm not going to demonstrate it here, but we could demonstrate algebraically that uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n to the p is not equal to 0. So in other words, if I take the general term, find its limit, uh, we don't get 0. Well, we learned in the last section that if the limit of the, uh, the underlying sequence is not 0, then by the nth term test, the series itself uh, must diverge. So uh, if p is less than or equal to 0, then uh, we know that, uh, that this series diverges. The more interesting case is what happens if p is greater than 0. If p is greater than 0, then we can define f of x to be 1 over x to the p, because, uh, I'll just annotate it here, because then 1 over n to the p is equal to f of x for all, uh, sorry, is equal to f of n for all n greater than or equal to 1, because I can just replace, uh, I'm just replacing x with n, and uh, if so, well actually first of all just note that uh, this function is positive, continuous, and decreasing. I think it's fairly obvious that uh, just looking at 1 over x to the p, that as long as x is, is a positive number, uh, this is going to be positive. Uh, just based on the rules of continuity that we talked about earlier, uh, it's certainly continuous. Uh, to show that it's decreasing, I can simply take the derivative, assuming that p is greater than 0. Uh, if I define f of x to be 1 over x to the p, which is x to the negative p, then f prime of x is negative p x to the negative p minus 1. That's going to equal, uh, that's going to equal uh, negative p times something positive. And we already know, since we've assumed in case 2 that p itself is positive, that means that negative p is negative. So this is, uh, this is going to be less than 0. And that, that shows, since the derivative is less than 0, uh, that shows that, uh, that the function is decreasing. So we have a function that we have f of x that meets the conditions uh, in the integral test. And uh, what we know is that, that when we integrate uh, that function well, from 1 to infinity, we know that it converges or diverges depending on the value of p, because it's just a p integral. So uh, what's the point of this? this? Here's the point. The point is that the rule, sorry it looks like rule, but I meant to say rule, the rule for p series is the same as the rule for p integrals, which is to say that the sum from Usually we, we say from n equals 1 to infinity, but I've actually omitted that just to show that it doesn't really matter. The point is we're putting a sigma in front of this to say that it's a sum. The sum of 1 over n to the p converges for p greater than 1 and diverges for p less than or equal to 1. So it's the same, it's, it's the, it's, it's the same rule that we use for p integrals. Uh, let me give you some specific examples. Uh, let's look at one case 1, 2, and 3 and ask, uh, just looking at these series, do they converge or diverge? Um, the answer in case 1 is it converges. How do we know? It's a p-series. p is equal to 1.0001, which is greater than 1, and that's all we need to know. We just know that the p-series converges in that situation. Um, the, uh, for number 2, we can say that it diverges. How do we know? Because p is equal to, because it's clearly a p-series, p is equal to 4999 over 5001, which is less than or equal to 1, and once again, that's all we need to know. In case 3, uh, we can observe that this given series is just, since we put 100 million over n to the 3 halves, this is 100 million times the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n to the 3 halves, and this is a convergent p-series because p is equal to 3 halves, which is greater than 1. So what we have is just 100 million times something that converges. In other words, 100 million times a finite number. I'm something that adds up to a finite number, and 100 million times a finite number is still a finite number.